Welcome back to the Winding Rivulet. And uh, I think we're going to... Let's see, it's 1836, so... A lot of times we end up starting off fishing for chub and switching to bream. It looks like... This time it might be more appropriate to do the opposite. Start, start with bream. And then uh, switch over to chub. Let's see how many... I've got enough maggots. Yeah, we do have enough bait. Okay, just making sure. Oh, wait. We're using grasshoppers. I forgot grasshoppers were on sale. Oh, we're not on sale, but we actually were able to purchase them at Old Berg. It's been a minute, so I've been I've been fishing this spot actually on a another account some since I made, last made a video. I know I had talked about trying something else after last time but this spot has continued to be pretty good so um for now we're gonna keep going at least one more one more session kind of in that time zone where I mean that time frame where it's a little tough because chub by this time are starting to slow down but it's really early to be going for bream so a little tough but we'll make it work We've got some ground bait to make. So one of the things I wanted to do was try a new ground bait on the chub. People have been asking what ground bait I use on the chub. And to be fair, I really um, have tried lots of different things. I, I really haven't settled on anything. And mostly that's because it seems like pretty much anything is working. In fact, what maybe worked the best that I saw well, not the best, but one, one thing that worked really well was doing basic bottom and not doing ground bait at all. But we're going to try this with ground crackers, bloodworm, maggots, and sunflower oil and see if the chub at least mined it. <laughs> uh, I think it will work probably pretty good, but we'll see. check our lines and then we'll make some more uh, bream mix start shoveling. Well, I guess I need to figure out which, what I named it. All right, Bream Sub is the good stuff. That's a nice one.
Now yeah, we should be able to make it. So if you haven't seen my previous videos, this is kind of what we're doing at, at our level for bream. Pearl barley, which is a part of the official bream mix, as well as our maggots and, and porridge. So at this point, the only thing that's really different is instead of anise oil, we're using sunflower oil. So this ground bait gets pretty close to what, uh, what eventually you'll make as the titled bream ground bait. And so it seems to work really well, at least for me. And you can start doing this at a much lower level than, um, obviously, than waiting on the actual bream mix to unlock for ground bait. I think I need to recast that. Need to make sure that these clips are still on here and that we're actually casting it far enough. Yeah, it is. Okay. third line is just looking really sad it may not even be on the bottom it's at a weird angle isn't it well, I guess it is on the bottom or it would be drifting Go back to sideways. Just at least for bream. I think chub, I like having them straight, straight out towards the chub, but for bream, I think it works better doing this.
So far, so good. We're at 248 silver. So we should be able to buy our second. Our second really nice reel after the, at the end of this, I would think. that one and I continue to not see a, <clears throat> a very um, noticeable difference between casting in different directions from this spot on the bream you can go all the way up towards these weeds there you can also or reeds you can also go sort of in the middle here all the way down to here really it seems like and have about the same result Even if you are low level with starter rods and reels for feeder fishing, which is what, so I'm playing with my son. We both created new accounts and we're both sort of leveling up together, just playing a little bit here and there and actually brought him to this spot and we've got, you know, Sparks and Sorrentos. And now I had to send those accounts bait because we can't make garlic dough yet and we don't have access to Old Berg to get the grasshoppers. But everything else we've earned. And even on that, we've been doing really well in this spot. And that's with, we just recently unlocked Paternoster, but for a long time, we were, for several sessions, we were fishing this spot for Bream and Chubb with basic bottom and seem to be doing great. One second.
Oh, almost, almost forgot to unmute myself. Would not be the first time. So something that I have seen occasionally will happen in this spot on garlic dough and of course other baits even more so, but gudgeon do occasionally come up here. And you can see, you know, and it'll probably be kind of, you know, similar to this throughout the night until we switch to fishing for chub around 9 a.m. But just a decent spot for this level, you know, once it gets into the nighttime, at least a nice mixture of marker bream, which translates to some good silver. And good experience. How are we doing on bread? 363. We could probably do it a couple more times before it comes completely ridiculous. You only make eight pieces when you only use a fourth of the loaf. You know, we are occasionally are catching eyed uh, off the grasshoppers. And so one thing I tried on my one of my main accounts is putting pea porridge sort of out in the middle, kind of like where we're fishing for bream right now, and um, did get a, a good size eyed come up that way. But I haven't tested that enough to know how consistent it would be. It might be a slow bite, but I just threw pea porridge out on one line and saw a one plus kilo I'd come in. So that again, may be a possibility. There's definitely I'd around and they like the grasshoppers. Okay. When we're fishing for chub, but we're fishing kind of over across the shore on the more shallow area. And it feels like sometimes I'd do a little better in the deeper spots, sort of similar to bream, but not always the exact same times as Bream, but sometimes there's overlap. take 2.5s all day long especially on this rig you see how easy it was to get that in now that we have the Adriatica So I think we get our second Adriatica and then we just start saving for the Hercules. If we are going to do that. Um, and then we're kind of set on reels moving into Cory, at least for our initial time in Cory. And we can start thinking about upgrading two of the rods and also of course getting f fish pieces unlocked so that we can do some actual burbot fishing in Cory. We are at 37.6 and I think we need to get to 50. Yeah. But some of this like cottage cheese dough 
if I'm not mistaken, cottage cheese dough is the one that we actually have to be at Cory to make it. So it gets, becomes a little awkward on doing that. Same with cheese cubes. We can keep making garlic dough. That lull in the middle of the night here. Seems like where we're at. It's like the middle line might be doing something. Yeah, there it goes. Oh, first line too. That was a quick bite. Happened fast, at least. Let's just check this. Yeah. Looked like something small was on there. So if we don't get any more good bream, which I don't think will be the case, but how would we feel about only seven marker, well, nine markers, but seven above a kilo, that's a little bit slower than you want, but it looks like that's not gonna be where it ends, so that's good. We had just put this line back out there. It's a nice one. Let's see, do we have an eight back on this top line? Yeah, and I think we'll put the six back on there for the chub, just see if we can't encourage a little bit bigger chub on that line. There's a really good spot on bear right now. I just... had such a good time on my main account there. The bite rate has been so good and for bear that's key. I mean a lot of times for me at least the bite rate at bear can be painful even if you are getting pretty decent carp when you do catch fish. 
But last night, especially on potatoes, the spot at 44.50 that's just been phenomenal. Spotted bear is producing barbel, all the different carp species, including black carp. A lot of grass, but some commons too. Occasional leather mirror, I think, as well. And um, even golden tench are coming out of the waters. So it's a pretty fun spot right now. Another nice couple of markers since we looked at this. So up to 10. I mean, if we end up somewhere, you know, around 12 for the during the bream time, that would be pretty great. And we'll switch to chub and see if our new chub ground bait works at all. It's interesting, I, you know, there's been a fish on this line for a little bit. I was getting the other two first, but it just would not, it was not going to go off. It was just hanging out there. Third line. Nice fast bite on the first line. Wow. So there it is. We now have reached our goal of what, 12 nice one kilo plus bream and we're still going until probably 9 a.m. we can up that number for sure because there's another one I still think there's a fish on that third line or there has been a nibble Second line again. Now 
Now the third line's going. Not quite a marker. Wow. Nice. Healthy bream. I don't know, this, this, this number one line may be doing better now that I've moved the location a little bit on where I'm casting it. And I'll show you that in just a second here. All right, so our top line, our number one rod, we're now casting about there. And our second line, we're casting about there. And our third line, about there. And it seems like it's going a little better, although what's, what's probably really made the difference is the time. We just hit this, like, hot spot where early morning they're just coming off pretty quick. And we're now at 15 above one kilo, so very productive. What are we doing with skill points here? I'm trying to remember what we decided to do. So we've got one point in worms account that I'm playing the lower level account and we put three points in worms and that has definitely made a difference I'm not sure it's worth it but it has definitely made a difference we don't fail as much when we're digging for worms two point five nine that is a great bream. So it's almost time to switch to Chubb. That number one line is just killing it right now.
All right. Sorry about that. Let's see if we can get on the chub now as we transition from bream to chub. Um, hopefully that will be it. Work keeps calling, so I keep having to mute myself. But um, we're having a really good session so far. Bream went better than expected. So now if we can just get a few marker chub to sort of top us off, that would be pretty good. So there's a chub. They must not completely hate the ground bait. We at least got one interested chub there. And as you know, if you have fished for chub here or any other location, they often do not set the bells off. So you just sort of have to check your lines. A lot of times you will see line movement or slack go in the line a little bit. There's a marker chub. Um, but because of that, I actually like having the, my rods really right at the spot that we're fishing for chub because, um, that means when I pick it up, it's going to cause the least amount of disturbance possible to the line. And since we're not often seeing full on pulls from the chub, having lines that are pretty much straight at where you're fishing, at least you can kind of see the movement in the line a little better. So this is how I end up doing it with chub. It's, it's unusual for me. I don't typically set feeders down exactly in the direction in which I'm casting, but this is one of those scenarios where I actually do. You see the second line there, the middle line. You said that slight pull, and, and usually that's what you'll see. Either the slight pull or the slight change in line tightness. And uh, that's kind of what we're looking for. And so then your next decision, of course, is when do you actually pick it up to make sure that the fish is on there? And a lot of times you can do that pretty quick, but you just don't want to mess up a nibble or a bite by being too fast with on the draw. There's a little bleak. But we've got all three lines with grasshoppers, all three lines with our chub mix. And I think I put chub mix on all three. I guess we'll start checking as we pick them up. And um, one thing I didn't remember to do is put the size six hook back on the front line. So we'll do that again next time there's a fish on there. That looks like a good bite. Yeah, there we go. That is a chub as it worms its way across the river to us. It's been a minute, so Let's check our other two lines. Okay. So we've got what, a couple chub markers so far? Yeah. And because of how long we fish for bream, we um, have a pretty short window of time where we'll expect the chub to be real active you could switch to chub earlier in the morning but as you saw you do risk losing some pretty decent bream so it's just kind of a trade-off there but to me there's an eyed to me if you can get any chub markers at all during the day with how well the bream spot has typically been doing at night that's just a just a you know a really good scenario it's so unusual to have a spot where you can fish it 24 7 and have this kind of uh, marker percentage I think if we wait long enough, we will have a fish on here, but 
Maybe not. It's still on there, biting it at least. Ooh. Nice pull at first. Let's go ahead and change that hook over. So back to the six. We got a nice happy hook six here. And we are using the right ground bait. We didn't change the line, so the clip is the same. It's fine. Just give it give it above water it'll come right across but just over a kilo Well, you can judge for yourself if you think this ground bait's working any better than some of the other ground baits that, that I've used or you may have used that have seemed to have done fine with chub, but this ground bait at least seems to not be repelling the chub. I mean, we are getting chub after chub, so um, seems like, at least for me, this ground bait's doing fine. That's the other thing. I call it two trophy roaches. <laughs> it's almost back to back on cheese at Bear yesterday. That was kind of fun too. That spot has just been off the chain. I'll see about doing a video on that spot on my main account. But I'm not sure. Clubby did one recently as well. And I think most people know about that spot that are um, at least that are higher high enough level level to be fishing bear it's been good for the last one to two weeks but it went from good to um crazy in the last couple of days So obviously it's fun pulling in the trophy chub that we got a couple episodes ago, but the more common experience here, more realistic experience is just trying to get as many of those one plus kilo chub as you can. Every once in a while we've seen them like around two kilos, but a lot of them in this spot have been just over one kilo and that's fine. At this level, that is some good experience. It ends up being some good silver. Um, we'll check it at the end of this session, but a lot of times, you know, when I sort the fish that I'm selling by, by uh, price, um, there's chub and bream mixed in there right at the top. So these chub are decent silver fish. I 
There's a bite that's about to go off on this one. It just hasn't yet. Let's check this line too. Okay. Line two again, huh? We have our, um, four point five. You know, we might try a couple casts real quick just for the fun of it. That asp coming out of the water sort of made me think about, oh, we could try to run our spinning rod by there and just see if anything takes to it that was weird by the way I guess a fish wasn't really on but it certainly felt like it was for just a half a second common roach all right let's go with our best chub mix we've got so we've got a couple seven out of ten stacks let's see if we can't scare a juicy one up Excuse me if I don't catch anything here. It's been a long time since I've tried to uh, spin fish at winding. Trying to get that speed up bonus.
All right. Well, we tried, right? We'll go a little bit longer, but in my experience, this is when the chub bite definitely slows down. Wow. It's unusual. Let's not get something. Maybe it was a bait issue. Blood worms just weren't doing it right now. All right, let's go uh, sell our fish and see how we did. Yeah, just the joys of float fishing, especially at a low level with low, cheap hooks, it's just brutal. So we end up with 65 fish, probably a pretty decent percentage of markers. The bream were definitely superior to the chub this time around. One more session like that, we would hit level 17. More importantly, we're making good silver and can continue to upgrade our gear. Hundred twenty seven silver. So, since we didn't have any two kilo brook chub, the top four spark spots were taken by Bream, but you see the chub get mixed in there pretty good. Hundred twenty seven silver puts us at 376. Let's go check real quick at Mosquito and see where we are on our stereo. We might not. Might go ahead and, I don't know, might wait and get it next next episode, we'll see. Honestly, I can't remember how much it was. I think we've got enough now, though. Although, what was the, the Hercules was almost 400, but the Hercules is a little more expensive, I think. Get 
Get our free food. Sorry, bye. Let's see. Yeah, 345. So we can go ahead and get that. And if I'm not mistaken, we can go ahead and put that on here. Goes up to eight kilos. This is 7.5. It's not ideal, but it'll work. And then what do we have line wise? We've got 7.5 line because we're using a liter. Um, we don't quite have enough silver for that right now, but as soon as we get a little bit more silver, we want to increase our increase our um, line as well. Okay. As always, thanks for watching. I will uh, see you next time.